Core Image is a very powerful image processing framework, which originally started on OS X, um, but slowly the features from Core Image have been coming to iOS. And in fact, in iOS 8, there are over 100 built-in effects and filters for you to use to apply to your images. And you can also write custom uh, filter kernels now on iOS 8. So what I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how to create a simple iOS application which essentially applies a filter to an image. And we're going to use the CI filter class to do that, which is part of the core image framework. So I've simply created a new iOS single view um, project here. And I've called it Circle Splash because that's the filter we're going to apply, Circle Splash Distortion. And the only thing that I've done is, is um, dragged in an image file of Patrick Willis. And that's how you're going to feel right there after this tutorial. So now let's go to our storyboard. Now one thing I'm going to do is just so we save some size, under simulated metrics, I'm going to change it to an iPhone 4.7, um, just so we have more room to work with here. So now the first thing I'm going to need in here is an image view and to actually display our image. So let me drag it in and get it centered. Now we want to apply some constraints to it. So I'm going to control drag from image view to its parent view, hold shift key down, and we're going to do leading, trailing, top, and bottom. That's essentially just going to pin it to the edges of the device, no matter what size device or, or whatever happens. Now we want to set that willis.jpg image to that image view. So there we go. And the last thing we want to do is the essentially the scale mode. We want to use aspect fill. And what that's going to do is no matter what the screen size or landscape or portrait, it's going to fill the screen on the device, but it's going to maintain its as aspect ratio, which is what we want. Now the last thing I need to add here in my storyboard is we're going to be using a pan gesture. So essentially we're going to apply the filter, but when the user moves their finger around on the image, we want to adjust it. So I'm going to scroll down here and under these uh, gesture recognizers, I'm going to get the pan gesture recognizer and drag it onto our image view. Okay, so now I want to open up the assistant editor and let me get some space here. And now we essentially want to get some references or outlets to a couple of things. First, that image view. So I'll control drag over and I'm just going to call it image view. And then we also want to get a reference to that pan gesture recognizer. And I'll just call it pan gesture. Okay, so now that we have those two things, we can actually start doing our code. So let me go back to here and let's open up our view controller. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up a few variables. So the first thing we want to do is to actually create our filter. Now again, the class is CI filter, core image filter. So I'm going to create a constant here. I'm going to call it filter is equal to CI filter. And we want to use the name uh, constructor here. Now here, we're essentially going to pass in a string with the name of the filter. Um, which is the easiest way. And if you want to know what all the filters are, just look at the, the CI filter reference in, in the documentation. But it's CI circle splash distortion. So now when we're actually going to be working with our image and applying filters to it, we're actually going to be using a CI image, um, which we can't set to our image view. So um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to essentially generate an image from our filter, which we can put in our image view. And we're going to use a CI context to do that. So we're going to create a reference to it right here, and we're going to call it context is equal to CI context. And for the constructor, we just want to use options and pass in nil. Now you can actually draw into... Um, an eagle context if you're using OpenGL, but we're not going to do that here. 
So the next thing we need to define are a couple of variables. Um, I'm going to call it extent, and this is going to be of type CG rect. Um, and we're going to define this um, in a minute, but this is essentially going to be the size um, of the image that we actually want to draw from our filter. And the last variable I'm going to call scale factor, and this is going to be of type CG float. And this is going to hold a reference to the scale factor for, for the device. So if they're on an iPhone 4, it'd be 1. iPhone 5S, it'd be 2. And now we have iPhone 6 Plus, which is, which is actually 3. So we need to know that um, in order to uh, draw things correctly. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the did receive memory warning block just to save some space. And now we can start setting things up. So the first thing we want to do is to get that scale factor. So we're going to say scale factor. And to get that, we're going to go to UI screen dot main screen dot scale. Now we want to create that extent, which is going to be a CG rect, which is going to tell us the size at which we need to create our image. Um, so we're going to say extent is equal to, and we're actually going to take a rect, which is the bounds of our main screen, and apply a transform to it based on the scale factor. So we're actually going to use CG rect apply a fine transform. Now for the actual um, rect that we want to transform, we want UI screen dot main screen dot bounds. And now the transform that we want to do is CG a fine transform make scale. And now we want to apply that scale factor here. So we're going to pass in scale factor for each of these values. And again, the whole reason we have to do this is because of the um, the essentially the DPIs of the different devices. So we need to make sure that um, we're paying attention to that or else things are not going to draw correctly. So now this extent is is the actual correct CG rec that we need to draw the image. So like I mentioned, it, when we're do, using core image and want to apply filters, we need to use a CI image. So I'm going to create a new constant and I'm going to call it CI image is equal to a new instance of CI image. Now to this, we're going to pass in a UI image. And this is going to be the image which is currently applied to our image view um, in our storyboard. So we're going to say image view dot image, like that. So now we have our CI image. And this is the image we can apply filters to. Let's set up our filter. The first thing we want to do is to say filter dot set defaults and what that does is um, whatever you know each filter has a variety of different um, properties that you can set de depending on the filter um, when you call set defaults it's going to set the default value obviously for all of those um, properties so now what we need to do is we need to tell the filter what image um, it should actually use um, to apply the filter to so we're going to say filter, set value. So filters use key value coding. So we're going to provide a value, and then we're going to tell it a key for uh, how to apply that value. So for the value here, it's going to be our CI image. Now the key is going to be KCI input image key. And this is how you can get to all of the actual um, keys for core image. So KCI, input, and then image key. So now it's essentially told the filter, this CI image is the one we want to be working with. OK, so now what we want to do is to take the filtered image and actually set it to our image view. So we're going to say image view dot image is equal to and this is going to be a new UI image. And we're going to be passing in a CG image. 
Now the CG image, we're actually gonna create using our CI context. So we created that variable above called context, and that has a method called create CG image. And now it's asking us um, which CI image do we want to use uh, to create the CG image. And we want to use the filter dot output image. So on a CI filter, there's a property called output image, which is gonna output, um, obviously, an image, a new core image with the filter applied. Now from rect, this is where we want to use our extent variable that we created like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just to run this in the simulator, just so, to make sure we actually have something displaying. So there you can see it. So obviously right now, the defaults have it, um, the little circle is in the lower left-hand corner, um, but obviously we wanna make this interactive. And when we're done, I'm actually gonna show you running it on my actual device because Using core image inside of the simulator is pretty sluggish. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is to, to listen for that pan gesture and adjust that filter. So I'm gonna come under here and we're gonna to go to our pan gesture and we're gonna add a target, which means which function should this gesture call when, uh, when it changes or when it happens. So for the target, it's gonna be self. And for the selector, this is gonna be a function that we're gonna create. And I'm just gonna call it panned. And it is gonna send an argument to us. So we put the, the colon there. Okay, so now that we have that created, now we need to actually create that panned function. So func panned. Now this is going to send to us um, a UI gesture recognizer instance, which is of course our pan gesture. And inside of here, what we need to do is to first get the location, the current location of the user's finger. So we're gonna create a constant and we're gonna call it location. And to get the location, we're gonna say gesture location in view so that's gonna give us a spe specific location in a certain view, and the view we want is our image view. Now we need to make some modifications to this based on our scale factor. So I'm gonna create a constant, I'm gonna call it x, and we're gonna take the location dot x and multiply it by our scale factor. Now for our y, core image, the Y is actually flipped. So we're gonna have to do a couple of things here. Um, we're gonna set Y equal to image view dot bounds dot height times scale factor. And we wanna subtract from that the location dot Y and also multiply that by the scale factor. And that will essentially um, invert it so that it's moving correctly with the user's finger. Okay, so now we actually want to set this location as the center for the filter's effect. So to do that, again, we're gonna say filter dot set value. And for a filter, when we're dealing with a point or a location, we're gonna pass in a new instance of CI vector and we're just gonna use the x, y overload here, and we're gonna pass in x, and we're gonna pass in y. Now for the key, we can look inside KCI input center key, like that. So now we've updated our filter. Now the next thing we need to do is obviously update our image view, and I can just copy this code right here and paste it in, and then we should be good to go. So I'm gonna run it on the simulator. So here, if I click, and why isn't, oh yes, I forgot one very important thing. If we go back into our storyboard and click on our image view, you have to, under interaction, user interaction enabled. 
because then it will actually receive touch events. And we also wanted to check off multiple touch um, because you know, conceivably in this, we might also want to pinch and zoom or rotate. Let's try that again. There it is. And now you can see as I click and drag around, we're getting that nice circle splash effect. So now you can see as I'm dragging, it's a little bit sluggish. So what I'm going to do is to launch up QuickTime, connect it to my device so we can actually see the performance of it on a live device. Okay, so here we are in QuickTime, which is connected uh, to my actual device. I'm going to take my finger and move this around, and you can see um, the performance is just amazing uh, for these filters. And again, I'm not even drawing it to uh, an OpenGL uh, context, which you can do to make it even faster. Now, obviously, I'm just setting one of the properties of the circle splash distortion. The others are um, the actual size of the hole, um, and again, check in the documentation for it. Um, but you can see uh, there's, again, over 100 built-in uh, CI filters and effects that you can apply um, to your photos in iOS. So again, check for the finished code up on GitHub, and thanks for watching.